Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and today we're going to discuss more discoveries coming from Saturn, and specifically, as the title implies, a discovery of even more moons. And not like one or two, at least 128 extra moons discovered in the last few months. And though this obviously does sound like quite a lot, and might even be surprising, in reality, for astronomers, it isn't. Simply because of some of the new explanations for what seems to have happened around Saturn approximately 100 million years ago and for how a lot of these moons very likely formed. And so let's talk about this in more detail, but I guess let's start with a very brief history of how all of this was discovered and how we know about all of this. And here I actually wanted to start with this really awesome atlas of moons created by National Geographic. It's actually a website that you can scroll through and it goes through pretty much all of the moons in the solar system, at least all of the major moons, and explains quite a lot of them in detail. But as you can see right here, it lists Jupiter with 79 moons, Saturn with 82. And that's because this particular website was actually made approximately 5 years ago. But then, by 2021, researchers using additional telescopes such as Canada Friends Hawaii Telescope started to discover additional moons, and in many cases completely by accident. A lot of these telescopes were not even looking for moons, they were actually trying to find some of the more distant objects in the Kuiper Belt and potentially discover Planet 9. But within just a couple of years, the number of moons around Saturn and Jupiter started to jump quite dramatically and it became a kind of an unofficial race. And so even though Saturn started with 82 moons, 80 new moons were discovered in 2019 and confirmed in 2021, and then 62 additional moons confirmed by 2023. And though additional moons were discovered around Jupiter as well, as of 2025, Jupiter only has 95 confirmed moons. Whereas approximately 3 months ago, Saturn had 146. But pretty much most of these moons were pretty small, less than 10 kilometers in diameter, and were essentially what we consider irregular moons. And most of them not even orbiting in the same plane. They actually had their own orbits, and were technically in their own family groups, suggesting some kind of an event that very likely formed most of them back in the days. And while in some of the previous videos I actually talked about several studies that estimated that Jupiter at some point should actually be able to catch up. And that's for one reason. Jupiter is more massive, and it has a much higher chance to actually acquire moons by, for example, capturing them from the nearby asteroid belt. And so quite a lot of researchers were continuously betting on Jupiter to potentially have several hundred moons within just a few years. Or basically here, the idea was that a lot of these moons were still hidden, but we should be seeing them by, well, basically this year. But this new study you can find in the description by Edward Ashton and his team essentially changed everything. They first confirmed 64 moons and then discovered 64 more. Basically confirming that many different objects discovered in various surveys turn out to be actually moons of Saturn. But most importantly, a lot of them seem to be part of previously known families with well-known and well-established orbits, implying common origins. But this discovery also confirms a really important hypothesis proposed by the authors approximately 5 years ago. We'll discuss this in a few minutes because it potentially explains why Saturn is always going to be the winner when it comes to number of moons. But basically now, the total number of moons around Saturn is 274, with Jupiter still containing only 95. And a lot of these moons were predicted to exist by many studies back in 2021. Mostly because, 3 to 4 years ago, researchers discovered that the majority of the moons around Saturn were actually moving against the flow, the so-called retrograde motion. Here 62 such objects were discovered, which actually imply that quite a lot more of these objects are probably moving in the same way, but were possibly ignored by previous surveys. Now most of these objects were obviously very small, just a few kilometers across and resembling a typical asteroid, and a lot of them now part of the group known as the Norris Group. The retrograde irregular moonlets of Saturn with a very specific orbit and a very specific inclination. And because they were moving in the opposite direction with a very specific inclination and an extremely specific orbit, this could only be explained one way. They were probably part of a much larger body that somehow became many bodies. And that's where we come to this hypothesis that was proposed a few years back. The hypothesis that actually tries to explain the irregular moons of Saturn and even its rings. And for the lack of better words, we're going to refer to this hypothesis as impact hypothesis. Yep, one more impact in the solar system that potentially created everything. Now this is actually based on supercomputer simulations from a study a few years back, but here back in 2022, scientists analyzed Saturn's system and tried to recreate it using Durham University's supercomputer known as DRAC. 
a computer inside Institute of Computational Cosmology. And here the hypothesis was in regards to how the rings potentially formed. Mostly because it was unusual that the rings were kind of young, and also some of the moons had bizarre orbits that were kind of difficult to explain. And so by running 200 simulated collisions, with different masses, velocities and angles of impact, at some point scientists were able to recreate an almost exact replica of Saturn and some of its moons. With the study basically suggesting that approximately 100 million years ago, or basically in relatively recent times, cosmologically speaking, it's quite likely that, just like Jupiter, Saturn might have had at least two more larger moons, maybe comparable to Titan in size. Now as you know, Jupiter has four regular moons, Io, Europa, Callisto and Ganymede. But for some unknown reason, Saturn we know today only has one large moon, and a bunch of smaller moons very close to itself, along with a set of very large rings, and actually relatively young looking rings, and some moons like for example Rhea and even Enceladus with somewhat unusual circular orbits. In other words, the system of Saturn was always a bit mysterious. And while initially the explanation for the rings was actually in regards to one of the moons. One of the moons might have approached Saturn really close, fell apart and created the rings. But this would not explain a lot of other observations, including the observations we're discussing today, including these bizarre smaller moons all over the place. And so that study from 2021 did propose that if this was a result of a collision, it would have actually done several things. First, it would have obviously created a brand new set of rings around Saturn, but some of the other debris would also start to coalesce into additional moons that you can kind of see in the simulation. Basically here we had a kind of a re-accretion of mid-sized moons. One of these moons could potentially be Rhea, a mid-sized moon relatively close to Saturn. And actually the existence of these moons was even proposed by various studies, simply because it looks like Saturn seems to be missing something between Iapetus and Titan. This is based on the analysis of orbits of the moons and even the interaction of Saturn with Neptune. You can learn more about this in one of the studies in the description that explains how a loss of a moon potentially explains Saturn's obliquity and of course its rings. But I guess more importantly, these simulations also confirm that if this collision indeed happened, apart from the rings, it would also end up producing huge amount of debris that would still be circling the planet today in very specific orbits, basically creating several new families of irregular moons. And because this only happened approximately 100 million years ago, a lot of these moons would be much much younger and possibly even contain similar stuff to Saturn's rings. And well, looks like now, 3 to possibly 4 years later, the team that proposed this finally found more evidence for their hypothesis. These 128 moons are going to be extremely difficult to explain unless there was some kind of a collision around Saturn and unless this collision produced all of these tiny moons. Which basically makes this the best possible explanation for everything we're observing so far. It explains the missing moons between Iapetus and Titan, it explains the unusually young age of the rings, it also explains why Saturn seems to have so many moons everywhere, and why a lot of these moons seem to have very specific orbits, as if they all came from the same event. But in this explanation, a lot of other moons, including Rhea and potentially Enceladus, might have formed around the same time. And that's actually where things get, I guess, a little bit intriguing, because if so, it means that these moons are only 100 million years old, and it also means that Enceladus, assuming it is a young moon, is extremely unlikely to contain any life. It's just a little bit too young. And though based on previous studies, we know that some of the older moons seem to be at least 3.8 to possibly 4.4 billion years old, the evidence from the new study suggests that some of these moons could be super young. But also implies that the moons that created all of this, the two colliding moons, must have been pretty big, possibly similar in size to Europa and Ganymede. Moreover, the other proposition here is that this very likely resulted in a kind of a cascade, a collisional cascade, that eventually resulted in many of these objects spreading across the solar system. So assuming that this hypothesis is correct, we should actually be able to find additional members that are no longer part of Saturn's system, but are possibly orbiting elsewhere. Now this hasn't been done yet, but if they are found, this would confirm the hypothesis once and for all. Which by itself is super intriguing, because in just the last 5 years, these new discoveries about Saturn completely changed what we believed about it, transforming our understanding of its evolutionary history and basically helping us see Saturn as something slightly different. A system that experienced a major collision that very likely influenced everything around it and potentially transformed its existing moons. But I guess until we get more evidence or until we get more explanations, at least for now the only thing that's certain is that right now Saturn has the most number of moons in the entire solar system, 
and actually it has more moons than all of the other objects combined. And Jupiter is unlikely to ever catch up, assuming that this collisional hypothesis is correct. Because that's the only way we can explain these unusual irregular moons. Since most of the moons here orbit in the opposite direction, it's difficult to explain this without a collision. But I guess until future discoveries or until someone else proposes something else or finds even more evidence, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out some of the previous videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and the sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining a channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.